Happy Monday, everybody. Stay your monthly planks. Uh, as promised, we're going to go ahead and do a uh, another DIY to make up for the part two of my snake enclosure build. Uh, the one that got the audio deleted. So we're going to go ahead and do another one, and we're going to show you the the process of assembling the panels that part one showed you how to cut. Now the differences, which it's not going to matter. I went with a two inch difference on the height of this enclosure. So this one here is going to be six foot by two foot by 16 inches instead of 18. Uh, just decided to change that up a little bit for the simple fact that when you stack them, if you do 18 inch tall, you're going to get three enclosures. Uh, and I believe with 16 inch tall enclosures, I might be able to get that fourth one and it won't be up so high. So, um, we're going to go ahead and get this started. Now, for, for everybody that doesn't know, there is a part one to this that shows you how to cut these panels out of your PVC. Uh, so, check that out. It was done about five months ago. So, you can refer back to that for the cutting process. And also, the difference on this one, another difference, is we're doing a drop-down door instead of the sliding glass panels with the tracks. But as far as the assembly on the whole thing, it's not going to make a difference up until we get to the door portion of that. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do first is the side panels and the back panel for the enclosure. So we got the two sides as stated. Now these here are 23 and a half long. Uh, and that minus half inch is to accommodate that front panel on the enclosure. So now we're going to grab the back panel. Now when you get this PVC, you're going to notice this right here. Don't make the mistake of assembling it with that uh, protected sheet on there because it makes it a real pain in the ass to, uh, to take off. So we got our back sheet. We got the the two sides and what we're going to do is just butt this side panel up against the back panel so the back panel and I'll show you on the front part the uh, and this is important or else you're going to mess it all up so instead of doing it this way we're going to do it this way now, the key to this assembly is this right here. These are inch and a quarter drywall screws. Now, you have to make sure that you get the fine thread. If you get the coarse thread, you have a risk of actually chipping or cracking this PVC. Now, the hardest part of this is getting this first screw in. So, all you're going to do is come over about a quarter of an inch and about a half inch down on your PVC. Go ahead and get that started a little bit. Line it all up on the top. And sink it in. Now you noticed, I did not pre-drill the hole. That is the advantage of using the fine thread on your screws sharp point, fine thread, and you're good to go. Now on these sides, I usually do four screws. And you're gonna to wanna to line that up real good and send it in. Like I said, I do four down the sides, evenly spaced. Make sure you line that up every single time. Ooh, I think I sounded really southern just then. Now, you don't want to sink it too much because it will crack. So, just to the, when the head is just below the line of the PVC, and you're good to go. Now, what I'm going to do is put a couple of these in. I'm going to turn off the video. And then I'm going to uh, 
go back to the next level. So let me get these screwed in and I'll be right back. Okay, now we've got the two sides and the back screwed together. This is the fun part. All right, not necessarily fun, but it's a little bit of a, a technique that you use in order to get everything squared up. Now, basically what we're gonna do is set this on top. This is the top of the enclosure. We're gonna get them somewhat lined up. All right, now, here's the important part. You're gonna line this corner up right here. You're gonna get it flush on both sides, and then we're gonna do the screw. Line it up, front and back. Drop in the screw. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is screw Go this way all the way to the end, then go this way all the way to the end, lining up this corner, and then from here over to here. If you do it that way, everything is going to line up perfectly. If you try to do a screw here and then go ahead and line this up with a screw here, and then on that corner, it's going to be harder to pull all the panels in and get them lined up properly because you might have a little bit of a not enough play. So. From this corner to that corner, this to that, that corner to that. Once you do all that, it's going to line up much, much better. So let me go ahead and get those screws in. We'll go to the next level. Okay, one thing I wanted to show you. Once you get down to the middle of this, you're working on the back side. So naturally, you can't reach in there and push this panel out to line everything up. So what I do is just kind of push this out, pull the, the, uh, the top, push it forward, and pull this back to get everything to line up as you're working the screws down on the top panel. I know that sounds like it's just, you know, pretty much common sense, but some people just, you know, the simplest things, and I'm right there with you guys, sometimes the simplest things to figure out kind of throw me every once in a while so that is uh, just my little added trick to get everything to line up okay so if anybody's familiar with Murphy's Law I was just recording away and uh, my phone got too hot and shut off so Basically what you missed is on the top side, I went ahead and finished the screws and lined everything up and flipped it over. Now we're doing the bottom side. I've lined up this corner and started this way. Now we're gonna go and go this way. Once I find the drill. Oh, and if you're not familiar with Murphy's Law, Murphy's Law states that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. This is my third attempt at this video. So, Murphy's Law has the tendency to bite me in the ass every single time. Alright, we're lining up all the sides and working our way down the back side. Now, that looks messed up, and that's fine, because what we're gonna do is use that to our advantage to line up this back portion. Once we do get to the final screw, everything will be aligned perfectly. Now, you probably are seeing my blemish now, <laughs> but that's all right. It's on the bottom and it's in the back. So, never gonna see it. 
All right, so I don't bore you with all of the screw uh, screw footage. We're gonna go ahead and pause this, and uh, we'll start for on the next level. All right, now as you can see, I have cut the face out, and we're gonna go ahead and install the front of the enclosure. Now this right here, if you noticed in the part one is a full inch shorter than your top piece so your top piece is 72 this is 71 the, the reason why it's 71 is because you have a half inch here then you have a half inch here and you want it to fit on the inside so we go ahead and put everything in now the big difference on this is the fact that we are doing the drop doors instead of the tracks now the difference in that is the face is going to be flush with the with the front of it if this is a face for a track system or sliding windows you're going to offset an inch you're going to go on the inch on the inside so since i'm doing drop doors uh, we won't have to do the inset same thing, same concept. We're going to start at the top corner. We're going to drill. We're going to start here and go down. And then we're going to go here, actually. Two side corners. And then work down, work across, and work down. So, let me go ahead and get some of those starting. About a quarter of an inch in. Get it flush, nail it in. Now the reason we're doing the corners first is so it squares it up. Now, you'll be able to flush everything all the way down. We're going to go ahead and finish these screws here and uh, we'll go ahead and flip it over do the same thing on it and then we're next level we're going to work on the drop doors stand by okay guys we had to move into the shade all right so what i've got here i've got the uh, layout for the drop down doors now the way i did this is I cut one and a half inch strips and then I've also beveled out the inside to accommodate the polycarbonate so you cut your 45s you get your measurement for the long side on the inside of the door you cut your 45s and get it all laid out and now we can start the assembly you're gonna need two drills to make it a little bit less of a pain in the ass so basically, we're going to line these up like so. Now for this here, I do recommend a pilot, uh, pilot hole. For the simple fact that it just makes it a lot easier. Now once you got that pilot hole, Make sure that doesn't slip. And you go ahead and drill it or screw it. All right, so what we're going to do is flip this over. Line this up. Pre drill. And push through. Here. Now I have in fact used 
uh, PVC glue for these joints as well. That is totally a personal preference. But uh, it does make them just a little bit more sturdy. All right. Now, when you get to this point, this is where it's kind of important. And make sure that that lines up correctly before you do this next portion. And it does. We're going to take the protective covering off the glass. Now, this is polycarbonate. For most of you that don't know, this can be cut on a table saw. So if you were to order a 4x8 sheet, you can cut it with a skill saw, you can cut it with a table saw, as long as you leave this protective covering on it. Alright, so, take that, and we're going to slide it in place. Now, once we get that lined up, we can go ahead and pre-drill. Like I said, it's uh, kind of cantankerous, if that's even a word. one fit in there. Now, the doors, you're going to want an eighth of an inch gap on either side of the, of the opening. And the reason for that is that gives you a little bit of ventilation. And there again, I forgot to take that off. Alright, so there's your door. Easy peasy. And just repeat the steps for the other one, and you're good to go. And we'll go to that next step once I get done assembling that door. Okay, so now we're at the portion of the doors. So, and I think I'm going to rearrange the camera here a little bit. i got to keep it out of the sun and still manage to get everything in there okay now we all know with the drop down doors they got to push up and you don't want them to go through so what I do is I install a door stop now ideally you want it a half an inch wider than this so it would be two and a half inches but I am using a piece of scrap but it does go the entire length of the face, so it would, so it's uh, 71 inches. All right. So another important this don't use the same screws you use for the tops and the side. This is a one inch screw, and you definitely don't want a screw to come out on the inside of the enclosure. So. You want to make sure that does not happen. 
Now we're going to get a screw started. We're going to put this up. Now, if this right here was two and a half wide, you could push it all the way up against it and have that half inch lip to catch your doors. But I do not have it that wide, so I'm going to do this by hand. Now, this is not going to interfere with your visual at all because your doors have the doors have the panel anyway so it's not going to interrupt your visual all right I'm going to get that squared up right there And always double check and make sure that that did not come through on the other side because you don't want your animal to be injured. And this one here has got to back up this one. All right. I'm going to do probably four on each door on this one. I should have spaced that one out a little more, but I didn't do it. The downside to ad living as we go. Best way to make sure is put your finger on that opposite end, and you can feel the screw starting to come out. So you can stop before you go too far. All right, now that is our door stop. The next thing we're gonna do is attach the hinge to the enclosure. Now, why the enclosure, you say? Why do you do that first? Because it's just a hell of a lot easier. And it's easier to get it level. You can lay it on the door face. And it's going to level out for you. All right. those of you that don't know, I really don't measure a whole lot. I just run with it. Alright, now these here, these are real tiny screws, so you want to make sure you don't over tighten. If you do, it'll strip out. And that's not something you want. Especially if you're keeping a 10 or 12 foot retick in here. You don't want to give them away to escape. Okay, I'm going to put these other hinges on and then we'll go to the next step. Alright, we got all the hinges installed on the bottom piece. So now we are ready to install our drop down doors. Take all your hinges, put them out. Now we're going to set the window in there. Now we have that top piece to stop the door from going all the way through. And then you just take your, you want to make sure that that gap that I explained to you to leave for venting is centered. Make sure you hold the window too, because you don't want that to, to fly out. And I think what we're going to do is this one first, so I can hold it. Just go ahead and put all of your screws in. I like to put one screw in each hinge. That way it holds properly. You don't have to worry about it. All right. And then 
you're going to do the same thing on this side. I won't bore you with the details on that, but we'll pick it up afterwards. Alright, so we've got the doors mounted. They are functioning properly. Now there is one other thing that uh, I'm going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get prepared for that and uh, we'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But for the most part, um, I really like the drop down doors. Now, a lot of you are going to say, you know, with the black screws being visible or, you know, some of you may not like the looks of this enclosure. You know, it doesn't look like an animal plastics enclosure. The best thing I can tell you guys is in this enclosure right here, a six foot by two foot by 16 inch enclosure, I have a grand total of about $184 in it, all right? Yes, it's not as good looking as an animal plastics, um, but if you order a six foot enclosure from animal plastics, you're looking at about $550 to $600 when you talk about your enclosure and the shipping and everything. So yeah, it's not as fancy and not as good looking as an animal plastics, but by gosh, for about $400 cheaper, I'll take it. All right, uh, let me uh, get a few things together and we're gonna go ahead and finalize this video and get it up, but uh, let me know what you guys think. You gotta do a little bit of cleaning, but that's gonna be covered on the next section. Stand by. Okay, now. I went ahead, uh, I actually went to Lowe's to uh, get some handles for the doors. And lo and behold, I picked up several handles and they're not going to work because the screw is too long for a half inch door. So I went ahead with the uh, door stops like I used on my black enclosure. Now, one thing that you want to... Uh, know about this one of the biggest factors and the reason I went with drop doors when this is closed up the biggest advantage that we have is from the inside there are no sharp edges with the with the slide doors or the slide windows and the track system you have the the actual door face this right here uh, that we cut out the windows for that's got that sharp edge it needs to be sanded down when you do drop windows you don't have to sand that down because there's no way of getting to that edge the door sits in flush and there are absolutely no sharp edges on the inside of the uh, enclosure now that is pretty much going to complete this uh, assembly I did want to show you the light system that I use from Lowe's. This is called Good Earth Lighting. This is actually an 18 inch uh, light bar, LED light bar. It's still gonna fit, but the, the 12 inch is more than adequate. Uh, but of course, Murphy's Law, they were out of 12 inch. So I wound up getting an 18 inch for it. Now, once you get to this point, you're gonna wanna wipe it down with a wet cloth to get all that uh, PVC dust out of it. You're gonna wanna vacuum the inside and wipe down all sides from the inside as well. And then you're gonna take this Lexel. This is what I use to seal the bottom pan of the, of the enclosure, to make it waterproof. That way if, the, uh, if your snake pees or dumps its water bowl, it's not gonna be flowing out and getting all over everything else or getting on your floor. So uh, Lexel for sealant, this stuff is awesome. Now, the downside to it is, I will do that right now. I'll go ahead and waterproof this whole thing. Um, now, the downside is you have to let this thing air out for about three days. It does have a very, very high fume to it. Um, and if you are familiar with me, I do not like introducing chemicals to my, my snakes. So I'll let this air out for about three days, two, three tops. And that's going to let it dry and cure real good and make sure that uh, 
you're not going to have any trouble by just going ahead and putting your snake in. So we're going to go ahead and put the light bar in. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a Pro Products radiant heat panel. The six foots, I do use an 85 watt uh, radiant heat panel for it. And I'm also going to build a little shelf for it. There again, that is going to be the other benefit for the drop down doors and everything being flush on the inside. I can actually get that little table right up against the door. They're not going to be able to squeeze down in between it and maybe push the glass out. So with that said, I'm really liking the drop down doors. If you want to get a better look at them as they open, it drops completely down. Um, everything is just right there. Now the only downfall to it is you lose a little bit of your visibility. You're li losing uh, three inches, an inch and a half on top and bottom. But there again, I kind of like that better. It gives them a little bit more security. So as of right now, any enclosure that I build will be with the drop door system. Uh, I really like it. The ease of build, uh, the no sharp edges on the inside, and um, just being able to do everything at the house. I think Lowe's, I meant to check that earlier. I'm pretty sure they have the polycarbonate, so you'll be able to do that at the house as well. You don't have to order it, and it's going to be a lot cheaper. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this is part two of DIY building your own snake enclosure. And uh, with audio this time. So, that's going to be a definite plus. I uh, hope everybody enjoys it. I hope it helps out some of you guys. If uh, there is a certain step that I kind of ran through pretty quick, let me know and uh, I can help you out with that. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate you watching. And uh, hit like and subscribe. You know, by the way, there was one of my videos that some douchebag hit unlike. And it was just a, I, I think, just showing off some of my snakes. If, if you want to dislike it, just just go away. Just do something else. I, I don't. I never could understand the whole dislike factor. But anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, hope this makes up for the audio being uh, taken off of the last one. Good luck with your builds, and if you have any questions with it, please let me know. I'll be glad to help you out. Thanks for watching.